Okay, hi. Uh, this is part two of uh, the September 11th, uh, 2011 uh, video series. Anyways, um, th th this project all started with the Palstar tuner and the double LED antenna and the uh, uh, 4 to 1 and 1 to 1 DX engineering balance and the antenna design just because I bought this. This is like the instigator for it all. Um, and kind of I was glad to do it, uh, but it was definitely. You know, it's been a long two months. Uh, I bought this back in July and uh, of this year. And uh, to make a long story short, um, it's a great amplifier. It's in good shape. I uh, bought this off Craigslist and I uh, was extremely pleased with it. Um, however, it started a whole chain of events. Uh, my tuner wouldn't work with it very well. It was difficult tuning after I built the, in I built the antenna uh, to satisfy this. Uh, because I basically had a radio waves fed with some RG8X coax and I felt a little uncomfortable uh, pumping a thousand watts through that but although it was rated there but you know I just figured like I eh, had time to build a new antenna fed with ladder line so um, going, getting into that to make a long story short uh, um, I had to fix it, figure out how to interface the uh, relay with the Yezu radio uh, what the, uh, the output of the relay uh, current was from the uh, the Yezu radio. I uh, had to build the cable for the relay for the Yezu radio because I had to go cat cable to an RCA, uh, which is in the back here. And if you notice this particular cable right here, I think you can see me touching it like that. Um, that was the uh, uh, cable I had to make. And basically it goes to there. There we go. And uh, if you notice, I even had to chisel off the back a little bit just because it's like it doesn't fit quite into that port. So I uh, had to take a little X-Acto knife and chop some of it off. Um, so getting this together uh, <laughs> is crazy to say the least. Um, today's fun was is that I put the one-to-one -one current balance tied in with the PAL star and uh, got it to tune on 160 through 6 meters, which I was pretty pleased with. And also, uh, the other thing that I found out last week when I was attempting to do this uh, was that I was getting on anything below 20 meters, so 17 meters, uh, 15 meters, 12, and 10, uh, I was getting a huge amount of RF. Um, in other words, it's like when I would key up on the mic after a certain power level, this radio would just lock up and freeze. Uh, it would just stay keyed on and I'd literally have to shut it down. So what I did was, um, KA8VIT, uh, I had discussed this with him, and of course, you know, being the wise hand that he is, uh, gave me the advice like, you know what, it's like, you know, grounding is probably in your cards. So what I did was, if we go outside the barn here and look straight down, you can see that thing with the right in front of the uh, flowers there. There is a ground rod, copper ground rod. It's wrapped in wire, but that's for another reason. But anyways, 10 foot down is that. And the ground wire comes up and ties into all three pieces here. And also to the back of the radio. So, uh, that's where we're at with that. Uh, it's extremely helpful, and uh, I have not had uh, tuning up. I was practicing tuning up all day today, and uh, didn't get a bit of chatter on the radio, so I was ex horribly, horribly pleased. Well, not horribly, extremely pleased. How's that? Um, so anyways, that's where we're at today. Uh, again, it's like, you know, it's like it seems like everything's kind of solved. So the RF problem, uh, the length of the feed line problem, uh, that I showed you on previous videos and talked about in part one. Uh, this Palstar tuner is absolutely rocking. I'm extremely pleased with it. It's a, a T-match tuner. Uh, it's rated at uh, about 1,500. Uh, it's actually rated at 2,000 peak, but you know uh, that means probably about like you know 12 or 1,500. You know RMS, so or, or, or average. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, this is MB8I, and uh, I will talk to you in a little bit. Maybe I'll come up with a part three today.